Hi everyone, Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com coming at you with 2023 Bowman Baseball. Eight box jumbo, pick your team number five from jazbeescasebreaks.com. The next pick your team is in the store, number six. And I believe, let's see how many teams there are left. There are 16 teams left. We might put that into a filler after this break. So just keep that in mind if you want to get a going to get some of your teams going before it ends up in a filler. So thanks for hanging out with me on a Thursday. Appreciate it. Eddie, last spot mojo with the Guardians. Thanks to him. Thanks everyone for getting in on this. Appreciate you. Congrats to the winners of those teams in the filler that we did, that jumbo pack number four. All right, so here's a case of jumbo. Oh, right, yeah, Jason Jaspi's right. Tamar Johnson was in draft. That's where his Bowman first was. But all cards ship except for vet paper. So vet common paper, all obviously numbered vet paper will still ship. But All right, NFL draft night tonight, ladies and gentlemen. That's what's been dominating the conversation today. The Eagles pick number 30 is in. So let's see who the Eagles take. The key guys we're looking for here Drew Jones for the Diamondbacks, Justin Crawford for the Phillies, Edouard Julian for the Minnesota Twins, Cam Collier for the Reds, Spencer Jones for the Yankees, among others. But th those are the main guys that we're looking at here in this set. They'll get the, uh, the early sleeve and top load treatment and all that, but obviously worth looking up all of the Bowman first that you get here. Who knows? Some of these guys could be late bloomers. Some of these guys could be future stars. But that, those players are where the hype is at the moment. Obviously, rookie paper will still ship. There's Robert Perez Jr. to 399. And the autograph is Blue Lunar, 64 out 150, Nick Mor uh, Morabito. That goes to Armando in the Mets. Perez Jr. will go to Seattle. That'll be for Mark. <laughs> That's pretty funny. They got Jason and Travis Kelsey's mom on there, and they just presented her with an oversized coin with Jason on one side, Travis on the other side to choose.
There it is. Nolan Smith, linebacker for Georgia. Added to Jalen Carter from Georgia, right? Man, that's a pretty good defense. It's a good defense already. There's Jackson Curio to 150 Atomic for the Brewers. That will be for Mark. There's Blake Louvier to 499 for the Red Sox. That will be for Chad Daw and the Red Sox. One of the Red Sox in the uh, the Philly. Next autograph is Robert Perez Jr. That goes to Seattle. That'll be for Mark Bissett. There's a Miguel Cabrera pink, 006 out of 175. That'll be for Detroit, Chad Cromwell. Drew Gilbert to 499 for the Strohs. That'll be for Oren and the Astros. We pulled a really cool Drew Jones auto yesterday out of this Bowman that I pulled. I thought was pretty cool. There's Gabriel Martinez, 111 out of 299. That's got to be up there. That's for Toronto. That's for Dennis. All right, break one in the books, or box one in the books. Seven more to go. Who do the Chiefs take in this? Final pick of the draft. 31st pick. Remember, Miami had forfeited their pick, so it's only 31 picks in the first round. That's a good uh that's good some good trivia 
in maybe a couple years, and maybe even now, just go out to the bar with some of your friends and be like, hey, who was the 32nd pick of the 2023 NFL Draft? And so people will make some guesses, maybe put, some, put a wager on it, maybe the next round. And they'll make, some, they'll make some guesses and then just be like, trick question, bro. There was no 32nd pick in the draft. Boom. Drink cashed. Rex had a William Lugo true gold auto to 50 day. Don't know much about him. I think he's Matthew Lugo's brother. I don't, even, I don't know who Matthew Lugo is. I know Seth Lugo. He has six ABs in the minors, and he's batting 500 this year. You could have just said he's hitting three for six. Does the number matter at that point? Have you heard of this guy? He's batting 1,000. Oh, he's one for one. Twin, that's Stephen Carney. Blaze Jordan to four eight. Who's batting? Who's who has the six at bats? Matthew Lugo or William Lugo? Blaze Jordan paper goes to Chad Daw and the Red Sox. A William. <laughs> William's batting 500 this year, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, no, I don't know. I, I, I don't know anything about those guys. But that's, yeah, that's, I feel like that's part of the fun with Bowman products is that Go on prospecting, kind of discover some prospects. Start following them, see how they're doing. Yankees, Matt Smith with Spencer Jones, 40 out of 125. So Matthew Lugo was a Red Sox drafted in 2019. And we've got uh, Nerwillian Cedeno for the Pi uh, not Pirates, Padres. That goes to Travis. Won that team in the filler. Justin Crawford for the Phillies. That's for Beverly. Those, uh, what looks like seafoam green or aqua lunar pattern is, it's not numbered. That might have been a gold parallel for a second. There it is, and Chiefs gets the uh, gets Felix Anodike Uzuma. Kansas State. It's 
That's good. Add some defense there. We got Austin Charles. 282 out of 299. Speckle autograph for the Royals. That'll be for Dennis. Won that team in the filler. Jacob Berry to 499 for Miami. It'll be for Jason. And Purple Chrome Autograph 120 out of 250. That's Nikau uh, Puaka Grego. Beverly and the Phillies. Uh, Rafael Devers Green, uh, 345 out of All right, so if you click the break schedule that Nightbot just dropped, click over to the NFL Mock 2023. I didn't really do a mock draft, but they kind of had some notes there. Um, so day one of the NFL draft is over. Pittsburgh is on the kind of on the clock. Well, they're, they're picking first tomorrow. So pretty exciting day, I want to say. You know, there was the anticipation of who's going to go first in the NFL draft. And it was CJ. Uh, it was uh, Bryce Young. And then Houston and picked up CJ Stroud. Then Houston traded up to three and got Will Anderson, the edge rusher, which is kind of crazy. The Colts ended up with Anthony Richardson. Seattle then got Devin Witherspoon, the corner. Arizona has got Paris Johnson. Vegas got Tyree Wilson. I'm happy with that. Atlanta got Bijan Robinson. Philadelphia traded up and got Jalen Carter. Fell to nine. Chicago then got Darnell Wright. They had flipped picks, I want to say. Nine and ten. Tennessee, shoring up that offensive line with Peter Skoronsky. Detroit got Jameer Gibbs, running back. First running back off the board. Could have been a little early, but let's, let's see if that gamble pays off. Green Bay, I thought was going to go some sort of pass catcher, but goes with, uh, goes with, uh, what should we call it? They went with a defensive end and said, is there a bounty on these Bowman? I'm not sure, John. Check the title. If it says bounty in the title, then yes.
So that was the first kind of half-ish of the draft. We'll go through the other half in the next box. And then we've got a nice Kumar Rocker, Blue Lunar, 41 out of 150. That will be for David M. and the Rangers. There is a $250,000 bounty on one card. It's definitely not us. Was there? I, I believe that. When the Bears had that first pick, there was some talk that Will Anderson could be snapped up. There's Axel Sanchez to 499. So instead of him, they ended up trading down, getting some additional stuff. And then they ended up taking uh, Darnell Wright, an offensive tackle, which makes sense. They want to they protect Justin Fields a little bit. Will Anderson went to Houston. They traded up to get the... So they, got, they ended up with the second and third pick. They had two of the first three picks. Took a quarterback, took an edge rusher. Here's a Brock Lobster Jones. 304 out of 499 for the Rays. That'll be for Oren. Oh, nice. And we got Ilber Herrera, 189 out of 199. That'll be for the Twins. That's going to go to Stephen Carney. Yeah, some nice moves for Houston. They're just really trying to kickstart that rebuild, which is a good idea. So they got someone throwing the ball. And they got someone that's going to rush the guy that throws the ball on the other team. Which is a good start. Try to get some cornerstone pieces on either side of the ball. Here's Puka Grego again. 65 out of 299. Speckle autograph for Beverly and the Phillies. So, yeah, so the Texans trying to get some of those corner piece, cornerstone pieces in place. And they can just keep building from there. Jason, what's going on? How are you? Jason Parker in the house. Here's Brandon Walter. That's a fourth autograph out of here. That's going to go to it's going to go to Chad in the Red Sox.
And there's Roman Anthony. Oh wait, are those autographs from the previous box? That goes to Chad Don, the Red Sox. We wouldn't have had one, two, three, four, five autographs in a box. Maybe there was, I don't know. I'm losing my mind here. We had, that's three boxes. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13. 13 in the first three. I'll take it. All right, where do we leave off? Jameer Gibbs, maybe? 12, 13th pick was Green Bay that they got from the Jets. Lucas Van Ness, defensive end. So they're looking for maybe an impact player right there. I thought they'd get a weapon for Jordan Love, but maybe they'll do that in later rounds. Pittsburgh got Broderick Jones. They traded up a few picks. from the, They got the New England pick. They took an offensive tackle to protect Kenny Pickett. Jets got uh, Will McDonald, edge rusher. Pretty good. That was from Green Bay. Washington got Emmanuel Forbes, a corner. And then another corner was taken. That was New England. Got Christian Gonzalez. Detroit got Jack Campbell, a linebacker. Tampa Bay took Kalijah uh, Kansi, a defensive tackle. Then there were four wide receivers in a row. It's Seattle got Jackson Smith, uh, Jigba. Chargers got Quentin Johnson. Baltimore got Zay Flowers. Minnesota got Jordan Addison. The Giants traded up from uh, the Giants take the Jaguars pick. Jacksonville traded down. New York got Deontay Banks. And then Buffalo traded up from a pick. Buffalo, oh, Jacksonville took that pick that took that New York Giants. They traded back down again. Buffalo went up and got Dalton Kincaid, tight end. Dallas picked up Mazzie Smith, defensive tackle. Shoring up that defense there. Then Jacksonville took Anton Harrison, offensive tackle. Cincinnati took Miles Murphy, defensive end. Saints took Brian Reese, defensive tackle. Philadelphia took Nolan Smith, edge rusher. And then a defensive end for Kansas City, Felix Anaduki Azumwa. Jason Parker, not he's saying stupid Buffalo, not happy with that. I thought they'd go. I think I think I had defense for them. For the Brewers, we got Jace Avina, sixteen out of two ninety nine. It's from Mark and the Brewers. We've got two uh, colored paper here, 18 out of 75, Daniel Guiarte for the Brewers, that's for Mark, and Miguel Belize for Chad Daw and the Red Sox, it's 299, a couple little extras. We got a Jordan Lawler Aqua Shimmer to 125. That's for the Dimebacks, James. And nice green paper, Cam Collier. That's to 399. 113 out of 399. That's for Cincinnati. That's for Mark Bissett. Nice. Your 19th overall pick, a first rounder, fourth rated Reds prospect, according to LB.com. Yeah, Jens, that's what Jason Jaspi, who's an Eagles guy, was was saying that too. 
Like the Philadelphia Bulldogs or the Georgia Eagles. Jason thinks they, I think they moved up to get Kincaid that Dallas was looking at. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, they did get Kincaid, the tight end. No? Didn't like that move? I think the Eagles snagged the tight end away from, from uh, Dallas a while ago, too. I think they got Dallas Goddard. Atomic Refractor to 100, that's a Glider Figuero for the Rangers. That's going to be for David M. Drew Jones Paper for James Robinson. We got Jason Dominguez, blue shimmer, 60 out of 150. Yankees, that'll be for Matt Smith. Think the Cowboys panicked a little bit? And we got Yoangel Aponte for, for Dennis and the Blue Jays. Be interesting if they use the Jalen Jalen Hurts formula with Anthony Richards in Indianapolis. Could be interesting. You know, let let him just kind of use his playmaking ability with the first season or two, and in the meantime, just keep refining his uh, his arm. He's more experienced too. And we've got Randy De Jesus, 228 out of 499. That will be for the Halos. That's going to be for Stephen Carney. Some of the best remaining players to start round two. Well, Will Levis, the Kentucky quarterback, still available. I think there'll be a lot of a uh, lot of interest in seeing where where he ends up. I think who else? Can we get another four autos out of here? Getting some bonus autos out of here. All right, another box. Colts or QB cursed? It's possible. They must have made some sort of deal with the devil to get Peyton Manning and Andrew Luck back to back. So with that kind of uh, that kind of fortune, maybe, maybe they made a deal with the devil. And now we're quarterback cursed.
That's what they get for not protecting the, uh, protecting Andrew Luck, letting him get banged up, for, sacked for so long. have looked at, at zero baseball things today and we're in the middle of a baseball break here the NFL draft really just taken over Mike Tower was mentioning this earlier uh, that the Braves stopped celebrating homers with the big hat after a complaint the Atlanta Braves according to June Lee on ESPN the Atlanta Braves have been celebrating home runs with an oversized hat this season but that has been put to a stop after a complaint from the league's official on-field hat manufacturer. The Braves said they can no longer sport the oversized baseball cap celebrate home runs after complaints from New Era who did not manufacture the big hat being used by players in the dugout. The Braves have began celebration after More Than Sports, a local sports memorabilia collector, gave the hat to Ozzie Albies and A.J. Minter during opening weekend. The Braves confirmed to WSB-TV in Atlanta that the celebration was nixed because of the request from New Era. This is a 47, this is, I'm not wearing New Era. The larger, they might complain about me, the larger than life hat received a lot of play as the Atlanta currently ranks second baseball in homers just trailing the Tampa Bay Rays. The celebration had become a fan favorite in a few short weeks inspiring social media content, but fans noticed the absence of the hat this week, drawing negative feedback on social media. Boo! Come on, New Era. That was the wrong way to handle that. Wrong way, bad job by New Era. Just, just sounds like they're 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 fun, sore sports. You know what they should have done, Jason? They should just still wear it. It's about team building. I think so too. Just take whatever finds, right? But what New Era should have done would have been like, hey, here's our giant hat because they're only complaint that it's not a new era hat who's going to lose sales for that it's not a new era hat rex that's why they're complaining if it was a new era giant hat they'd be like do it as much as you want what new era should have done was they should have just been like, we'll, we'll develop our own giant hat to give to you, officially licensed. There's the 499 Oscar Gonzalez. And here is Brooks Lee, atomic refractor autograph for the twins, Stephen Carney. Oh, I see, I see. You're saying New Era will lose sales because they're being, they're being whiny. Oh, that's, that's what Rex was saying. No, I, I get it now, Rex. I don't know if they'll actually lose sales for that, would they? They should have just done a, if you can't beat them, join them thing and just developed a big hat and then say, here's a special custom made big hat for us, for you, Atlanta. There's Juan Brito to 125 for the Rockies, Josh Melton. Yeah, the hat thing, yeah. The Angels have the samurai hat. The Brewers wear the, the wedge of cheese. But I think that was their, that oversized hat was their own head topper. You know, I don't know. 
think New Era should just give them. I think New Era should give them the new, uh, just an oversized hat. And <laughs> the article almost sounds like New Era went to Major League Baseball. No, I don't think they did. I think they went directly to the Braves. I don't know. Yeah. Jason Jay says, boy, that's a boycottable offense. Maybe it is. I like their hats, though. If I was a Braves fan, yeah, exactly, Rex. If I was a Braves fan, I wouldn't want to do that. Yeah, just just like the Bud Light, all the Bud Light things a little extreme, but yeah, it's close. It's somewhat like that. Chad with the Red Sox. You shouldn't even be able to say boycott. What about girl caught? Well, no, you can't even do that either, Rex. Come on, don't you, don't you even know how to woke, bro? It wouldn't. It would just be caught. It will just caught things. You don't boy or girl caught anything. You just you just caught things now. There's Angel, uh, Jenna. I'm gonna go with that. Guardians. That's gonna be for Eddie. Last spot, Mojo. Oh yeah, Jason. Yeah, if you're that's right, you're in that area. You're blocks away from Augusta National. Yes, you can you can definitely boycott it. There's Abel Bastidas speckle to 299. Yeah, you can you can definitely boycott that for sure. You'd be like, hey, what, what, what sign would you have? would be like, new era, no fun. That, that's what I would say. Is the new era all about no fun? Jason Parker, that's the sign I'd bring to the stadium. New era, no fun. Bring back the big hat. Yeah, meet the new era, Jason Parker, same as the old era. Hashtag greed, hashtag money grab. Just make a big hat, new era. <laughs> Just make the big hat, give it to the Braves, easy. You're acting like little bees. As in babies, not the other word. <laughs> You've got zillions of dollars, right? Just make, just, or buy the company that makes those big hats. Put slap new air on them.
build something on the giant hat to cover your eyes and ears so you can go through life never and see your hear things that offend you, says Mike Powell. I'm not sure if New Era was offended by the big hat. I think they were just whining that it wasn't their officially licensed big hat, if they even have one. And I don't think anyone's complaining was offended by the big hat. It's just a fun thing that New Era was being no fun about. They're like, we don't want to be fun. <laughs> New Era wants a team to stop having fun. That's what it's about. It's about it's about fun. The New Era does not want you to have. Oh no! Fun. Yeah. Well, that's a different. That's, I'd rather not get into the what's woke and what's not conversation. But what's having a New Era is just. There's just being no fun. I mean, that, that cuts across party lines, all religions, all different ages and races. Baseball team, having fun with a big hat celebration, big corporation, spending a lot of money being the official hat provider of Major League Baseball, doesn't like it, wants you to stop wearing it, stop having fun. There's Josh Hood to 499. They're being anti-fun. And that's that's no fun. Josh Hood goes to Mark and the Mariners. We've got Simon Juan to 199 paper, purple paper. Uh, yeah, I'm definitely more of a more of a baseball guy than a than a football guy. If I had to choose. Is Randy De Jesus to 150? Blue shimmer for the Angels. That'll be for Stephen Carney. Yeah, you can have fun as long as they provide something you're wearing. That's a good. I mean, listen, I understand from the business perspective, New Arrow says, hey, we pay a lot of money to be the official licensed hat provider of, of Major League Baseball. But I don't know. There's just, there was just a better social media friendly, PR friendly way of handling that situation. There's Jorge Ruiz, purple chrome autograph, 11 out of 250. All those top loaders had like a little bit of glue that was stuck right there, so you couldn't get the card in. For someone with less delicate and less professional hands, what, what could happen is if you slam that in too far, you create like a little notch right there. But that's someone with less delicate and professional and steady, strong hands like myself. Lesser hands would have, would have just tried to ram that card in there and create a nasty notch at the bottom of the card and ruin it. There's 
There's Drew Gilbert, 114 out of 250 for the Astros. And we've got a Gabriel Martinez autograph for the Bluebirds. That's going to go to Dennis and the Blue Jays. Oren has the Astros. Bowman Chrome, Drew Jones for James in Arizona. And here is Cam Collier for Cincinnati and Mark. Paper, Drew Jones. Again, there are two boxes to go. We'll do a little autograph recap at the end of these two boxes as well. All right, so that's, that's new era being no fun. What else is happening in the league here? Twins receiving good info on Kenta Maeda's elbow. Guardians Willis out of the hospital cleared to travel. Yankees judge hip discomfort exits win early. NL Best Pirates ride Mitch Keller's 10 strikeouts past my Dodgers. GM General Manager Han put the White Sox poor start on me. Otani's just a few feet short of getting a historic cycle. Starting pitcher with a cycle, never been done. For example, Jay say I remember watching the 95 Braves win the World Series with their grandpa. And the fact that he wasn't here to watch the Braves win the 21 series with my son kind of hit me hard. Yeah. You know what? I, I, one of my friends, she told me something that was really poignant. Like football is a sport that TV teaches you. Right? There's so many rules. There's so many different things you got to learn. So many different positions. So many different plays that it's... You know, that even the hardcore football fans will have a hard time grasping, like, play concepts and offensive concepts and so on. It's very complicated, right? Which, which makes it unique in itself. Baseball is a, is a sport that your parents teach you, right? It starts off in the backyard. You're swinging an oversized bat off a tee the first time, you know? you watching baseball with your dad. You get take, It's easier to go to baseball games and... Easy to easier to explain the sport of baseball. You hit the ball, you catch the ball, you run the bases, that's it. You get tagged, you're out, you know. So there's a there's still as com complicated as the game has gotten over the years, but the basis of it is still pretty pretty simple. Football is a sport that TV teaches you, baseball is a sport that your parents teach you. That makes it more special, I think. That's why it's important. But baseball is always talking about, ah, how do we get young people to watch a sport? You know, we, we got to get kids in like the age 18 to 29 demo, whatever the demographic ages are. We need to get that age group in there, you know? And that's, yeah, I agree. But if you're a kid growing up with basketball and football, you watch baseball and you're like, man, this is not very exciting. <laughs> I don't blame him, you know. There's Matthew Libertor to 150. But guess what? If you grow up watching, playing baseball, go, or going to baseball games or whatever, I assure you, that's how you get that's how you get fans. There's Nick Morabito to 299. I mean, that's why baseball should just be like every baseball stadium should just be like, hey, any kid under eight years old, you get in for free. Every time. I don't know if that actually happens. I don't have kids, so I don't know how that works, but 
That's Armando with the Mets gets the Nick Morbito speckle autograph. But Major League Baseball should just subsidize it. Subsidize it. They'll just be like, listen, every kid under age eight with a parent or guardian or trusted adult figure. You go for free. Even if it's not for every game, just do it for like Sundays or something like that. You go for free. Sunday day game, every game in baseball, kids eight and under, go for free. The stadium would be filled. They'd be filled with kids during the day, watching baseball, and falling in love with it, I guarantee you, you do, you do that for like, do that for 10 years, you know, <laughs> you know you're, getting, you're, you're getting a giant generation of kids who are gonna, even if you capture just 50% of those kids that go there, less than that, 40% of the kids that go there. There's Nelson Rada for the Angels, Stephen Carney, guess what? There'll be a lot of young people growing up love, with, with a love for the game. You know, and kids who want to play the game. Kids who will eventually, you know, kids who will eventually uh, maybe become baseball players. There's a Kennedy Corona to 499. Yeah, take your son to my mine and gives are even better. See the players up close most of the time. You know, especially in places like LA, a lot of conversation about why aren't, why don't we see more black baseball players? You know, something Mookie Betts talks about, something that, that Jason Hayward talks about a lot. Listen, just Major League Baseball, all they gotta do, inner city kids, underprivileged kids, under the age of eight, you know, same deal. Get them to baseball games, put them in the stands. Have more access to, to, to baseball. You know, a lot of baseball diamonds around the country that are just not, that are not well maintained. When's the last time, when's the last time, I don't know, a pickup soccer game, a pickup basketball game, a pickup flag football game, touch football games seems to break out at any time. When's the last time you've seen a, a pickup baseball game? I feel like stuff like that used to happen all the time, right? 44 out of 50, Emmanuel Bonin. I remember when I was a kid, you know, um, there would be, we, my friends, or my cousins lived, and my cousins played a lot of baseball through, through high school. They were pretty good, but I was not. Um, but uh, I remember they used to live in, in the San Jose area, and we, they lived on a cul-de-sac. And I remember visiting them during, over summers, and all the neighborhood kids played baseball. They lived on a cul-de-sac. You set a base. You, you put, you know, like someone's sweater here, someone's backpack over here. You make a diamond, you know, and you throw around. I don't know if we actually used a baseball. We might have used a softer baseball just so we wouldn't destroy windows. But, but yeah, you play like that for hours. It's Michael Royal, to four ninety nine, and this wasn't very long ago. <laughs> Here's Michael Roy. That's another fourth autograph. It's like we've got some bonus autos out of this case. That goes to Seattle. That'll be for Mark Bissett. But baseball is easy. The problem is 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 easy. I feel like Major League Baseball is they're trying to I get it, they're trying to attract young kids now. But if you're trying to catch the early twenties demographic of baseball now, if they already don't like it, it's a tough ask. You know, and just telling fans, hey, we changed some rules. You know, I don't think it's going to make someone who's a huge basketball fan be like, you know what? Yeah, baseball's my thing now.
kind of have to punt this generation, I want to say, and just start start with the kids. Start with everybody, every single kid. You know, you try to get every single one of them to, to a baseball game consistently, have them play baseball wherever they are. You know, and then and then that's that. Joe's saying, you're, are you, is that sold out? I hope it is. Is the filler sold out, Joe? Is, does it say last filler in the title? Do we get the last filler sold out? Yes, Joe is saying. Is it the last filler? Make sure it says last filler on there. You bought the Jason Parker bought the last three, and it says it, Joe Cook says it says last filler. Wow, it is indeed sold out. All right, gang. Well, good thing we're on our last box. We'll probably get this done in the next five ten minutes or so. I'll take me another five minutes to put this break to bed, put all the print out all the labels and all that sort of stuff, and then we'll set up that hip parade break and get that going. Now, by the time we get all that done, I feel like we should have some time for another short break, if you want. Hmm, what could we do? What about, what about that signature series? That's a, there's a 13-team random number block for the SIG series. That's only... It's not a very long break. We're getting towards the end of the night. And that's very, not a very long break, and there's only nine of, ten, um, nine of ten random number block spots left. That might be a good candidate if we want to focus on that. We got Tamar Johnson, 93 out of 150. Blue Chrome Autograph. Pirates, that's for, that's for James. James was looking for a Tamar Johnson autograph. Not as Bowman first, but still nice. Fourth overall pick. We could. I mean, Carl was looking for, Carl usually buys four or five spots at a time. But we also have to do a few fillers, too. It's not as crazy as you think, Joe Cook. We got, I think, Hilton Tam already has two spots in that, two full spots in there. So he's looking for some people. It could happen. I've seen it happen before, and I know it can happen again. It's not as crazy as you think it is. Here's Zach Nito. Nice. 38 out of 50. He's been called up. And he's been playing some, some games for the Angels. He's doing all right. Stephen Carney. Hey, that's why we're already on Eminence Pick Your Team or Random Hit Number Nine. People can trust us with those those uh, ultra high end breaks. Here's JJ Blade, Purple Paper to two fifty. Purple Paper Majesty above the base card planes. Bowman the Beautiful, that's my, that's my song there.
There's Jordan Lawler, purple Ray Wave to 250 for James and the Diamondbacks. All right, final stack right there. Good luck, everybody. There is Juan Alonso, 37 out of 50 gold auto for my Dodgers. That'll be for Yi Ho Jin. Nice one, Ho Jin. We got Ryan Clifford. Is is there an Eminence football? I yes. Have we done an Eminence football? Or has it always been basketball? There's Oren with the Astros. It's another four auto box. There's a Daniel Montesino to two fifty. It'll be for the Pirates. Purple Chrome for Travis. To Jones paper. All right, let's see how we close this out. That song makes me want to buy a Dodge Ram truck. Rex wants to know if anyone wants to tackle some flawless. Yeah, we can do some flawless baseball. That would be a good way to end the night. Is that another autograph? That's Jorge Ru. Is this, am I, am I doing this right? That's our fifth auto. Angels, that's gonna be Stephen Carney. Or maybe that's from the other box. Maybe I was stacking the other box on there. I don't want to find it. There should be 24 autographs. We'll do a count. Three autographs, eight box case. So let's see what else we got here. All right, so there is that. Was I just stacking up boxes? There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four. Eight times three, twenty-four autos, right? Three autos, grass for box. Look at all these bonus autos we had. One, two, three, four, five, six bonus autos. I'll take it. Thanks, Bone. I'm Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com, and I'll see you next time for the next one. That was Pick Your Team 5. Bye-bye.